Hey y'all, it's Andrew Couch here, and this is the beginning of season two of the Tidy Tuesday series. So I'm going to be making a few changes into the actual series format. Um, first, I'm actually going to change the frequency of videos. Uh, so I'm going to change it to basically two videos a month, and I'll be on a bi-weekly or a uh, bi-weekly basis. So it'll be like a video once every other week on Tuesday. Uh, I'm still going to upload it at 7 p.m. Central Time. Um, and one of the main reasons why I wanted to reduce the actual frequency of video content was one, I really didn't want to burn out because, you know, now that I'm working full time, I'm constantly coding in R and SQL. So I don't want to have to, you know, write a lot of R code on the weekends every week. Instead, I can kind of like, you know, split the actual work on the weekends in half. Additionally, though, um, I will be uh, making a few extra videos every now and then um, that won't be on Tuesdays uh, for our scheduled formats. So I think it'd be interesting to do, you know, more interviews with people in the data science community. So not only other data scientists in, you know, different fields, but also like people in uh, data science fields that aren't actual data scientists. So like project managers and stuff like that. Um, I also wanted to like, you know, interview a few professors of mine and kind of pick their brain about one teaching teaching R in college and also R in academics and also like academic trends and industry trends and stuff like that. So that won't be replacing any of the any of the actual videos. Um, instead, it'll be mostly an addition um, to that type of stuff. So it's still gonna be the same basic formats, but there's gonna be a few goodies uh, sprinkled every now and then. So uh, to start off the actual series, uh, I'm gonna kind of show you the actual repo format. So I split the actual season one and season two scripts out. Um, I also have now, oops. Uh, um, I also will have like, you know, the app folder, data folder and scripts folder um, and stuff like that. So it's nothing too crazy. Um, additionally with the actual scripts that I'm be posting now, uh, I'm gonna try to include like a video link. Um, this is like a random, uh, a random uh, riddle that I was working on. So for example, the carrot versus tidy models script, I'm gonna include the actual video link of it. So um, that's gonna be a little bit easier when, in case if someone, you know, comes across my repo or comes off across the actual scripts uh, and they wanna actually kind of do a walkthrough of the actual um, scripts, um, that'll be there. So starting out this season, uh, I wanted to do a video on Docker and just like overall deployment using um, R and Docker. Um, when I was actually learning about Docker, um, I've heard about, you know, all these DevOps systems and applications like, you know, you know, Docker, Flask, uh, Kubernetes, but they're said a lot, but it's always assumed that you know what they're actually talking about. And for me, I really didn't know, you know, what really differentiates all these, um, application names. I know they're very popular and used in like deployment and DevOps, but I didn't know exactly what they actually did. Uh, so at a high level, Docker basically, you know, creates a little mini computer or a virtual machine for your computer for your scripts to run on. And the main idea behind it is that, you know, when we're running an R Shiny app, you know, we have to run the script and then we can access it through like our browser or interface. Same with like a plumber API, we run it on our R script and then we can start accessing it. Uh, but that kind of doesn't make a lot of sense if you're, you know, working in a company and you want to deploy your scripts to like on a company wide level, right? So it doesn't make sense, you know, to have like some laptop uh, plugged in, turned on all the time to basically get those requests. Um, instead, it makes more sense to have like kind of like a lean computer. In this case, they use like a Linux system. Uh, and that way, you know, we can kind of just have a computer just made specifically to run a particular R script. Uh, so that's what ba Docker basically does. And then Kubernetes is kind of like helps running the back end to help like load management and stuff like that. So when I was actually learning <laughs> Docker, there were a lot of resources that weren't very useful in my own case. Um, some of the, you know, Docker resources that I used, uh, weren't up to date, um, and just simply wouldn't even run, uh, cause not really managed very well. Um, additionally, like the entire Docker image is actually pretty simple. Um, we already have the Rocker community or the R community with Docker, and they create a lot of these base images for like R, 
our studio, tidyverse, shiny, etc. And then basically what we have to do is just like add a little bit more to it. Like, you know, we add our own apps, our scripts, our data and our libraries. So when you actually look at a Docker image that I created, um, it seems pretty simple, but one of the issues with it is that uh, when you're actually learning Docker with as an R user, um, there's a lot of these random commands that they kind of tell you to add, but you really don't know why you're doing it. So it's really hard to debug um, the issues with the actual Docker image. The main resource that I used was statworks.com and they kind of do a, a pretty good uh, description of how to create your Docker file uh, for a Shiny app. So as you see, it's a very short article and this was literally the most useful resource I, I used and it took me about three weeks of actual research until I came across this uh, website and it literally worked like in an instant. So it was kind of interesting to see that. That being said, I'm gonna open up the season two folder. Uh, I'm gonna go to our apps because we're gonna be deploying an app. I have a little R Shiny deployment folder and it contains a R folder, which contains our app, you know, our modules, our final model, um, and then our data. And additionally, our Docker file. So one of the reasons why I created a little separate folder was just so we have like all this stuff in there and it doesn't really inter um, integrate with our other files, but I'll get into it more once I open up my Docker file that I created. So when I was first developing a Docker file, I was actually using VS Code. And I think it was kind of a, a weird way to approach it because you can actually create Docker files in our studio. So uh, from now on, I'll probably just do it in, in uh, our studio. Um, so here's the actual Docker file. As you can see, it's a very short uh, Docker file. You know, it, it seems pretty simple, and I think it is a very simple thing. But there's a lot of weird headaches that I ran into with like, uh, was it Debian packages and stuff like that. Um, so let's actually go through it. So here's the actual base image that I imported, which is a shiny image. So it installs like the shiny stuff. Um, this is from the hub.docker.com uh, from the user Rocker which is the R community who helps create Docker files for um, our users. Then we actually install the um, libraries for our iGlinux system. And as you can see, it's kind of um, ambiguous. We know like XMLs, you know, made with like, we know like an XML file, right? Um, we know like SQL, um, Maria, DB, so it's like a database end, um, SSH, SSL, curl, ODBC connections, stuff like that but I really don't know what they're exactly doing and why we do it. And that came with a lot of problems because uh, when you're looking at different, you know, articles and resources, they kind of install different stuff, even though they're using the same image and they don't really tell you why they're doing it. Um, so that was very annoying. And it was kind of frustrating to actually see, you know, how simple these, these Docker files are. And yet you still run into issues where you kind of don't know what's going on. Um, that probably is a, probably of my own fault too but i think having you know a nicer website like the r studio um tutorials that they offer uh, would be useful in the future um for the r community as a whole um so here's this um little command that actually i kind of update everything um, with the system libraries after we install the uh, debian or debian packages and then we actually go into the more r specific things so in this case i installed the packages required for um our app so like typers shiny dashboard actually boost dt for our tables plotly for our plots tidy models for our models gg ridges for one of our plots and tidy text to actually format one of our faceted plots um if you haven't seen the app um you definitely look at my season one video um series where i kind of go over the actual process of creating the actual models and actually creating the apps so one thing that i did too which i think it makes it a little bit easier um is i made a directory to a root, root app directory, et cetera, uh, a root directory. Um, and then I copied the actual folder containing all of our stuff uh, into um, the root folder called shiny save. Then I expose a connection. Uh, and then we run the command like R and we run the shiny run app, which is where our actual app is being uh, housed in. Okay, um, I'm actually gonna go in and kind of show you a few things that I changed and why I didn't explicitly put this doc file um, with my UFC uh, sports betting repo and I kind of have had it where uh, it was just kind of integrating with all the existing files. Um, one thing is just because I use the the here package a lot um, because I think you 
managing directories and working with directories in R and maybe even, and maybe just it's because it's Windows is kind of a hassle. Uh, so I just kind of use here and it kind of gives me the, all the root directories and stuff like that. Uh, definitely because I'm pretty lazy, but that actually runs it for me. It ran, ran I ran into a few issues with directories, uh, which is why I made my own directory in the shiny uh, in the Docker file. And I also removed the here package from the app. Uh, that way you can actually like kind of explicitly look for the models and the modules. Okay, so when we actually have the um, Docker file, what we can do is, as you can see, I've already built this um, file, but we can just build it again. So Docker build dash T, and I'll just say, what did, what did I call it again? I'm um, just set on the UFC app, and then dots, run it. And as you can see, we're in the terminal. So it runs pretty fast just because I've already built it. Um, so it, you know, it runs all the commands, it adds all the, uh, it kind of adds all the images and creates the layers and stuff like that. And then we created the file. Um, we also have to make sure we have Docker installed and that we have like, um, and we can kind of check if uh, what's going on. So right here, uh, we have the UFC app and I can just do like a run if I really wanted to. Um, yeah, I, I do a run and then we can see it open there um, and we can actually like open it in our, uh, in our, um, what is it, our Chrome. So if we type in like localhost 3838, uh, since we have it exposed to 38, uh, oops, what's going on? Oh yeah, it's loading up right now. Uh, oh, maybe it's not. Mm, let's see here. See what's going on oh well i can just uh i guess run it right here so if we look in uh docker run dash d dash dash rm dash p or uh slash p, oh yeah dash p and then we do 3838 3838 uh ufc app and then i can refresh it to set Oh, what the? Oh, uh, which one? Oh, there you go. So it's up right now. Um, took a little bit to load. I think one of the things I can improve is kind of remove all of the excess data and also kind of optimize the UFC, dash UFC dashboard. But we can see our dashboards in our uh, local host 3838 uh, and it's running. Okay, so I'm actually gonna stop these okay um one of the things that's actually pretty useful about um using these docker files is that it's pretty easy to share it to people so once you actually create your image um what i actually did was put it on my um docker hub and then uh oops let's see here uh we can see our uh, docker hub and then uh if we actually do the uh public view for for my actual profile uh we can see that uh, we have our UFC app right here that you can um, grab by just copying this command and pasting into your command line, uh, which is pretty useful too, because that way you don't have to, you know, go to go through and install your packages and do all that stuff and recreate your your um, Docker file. Instead, I already have it right here, which will have all the stuff for you. Um, so that's basically it for this video. Um, I know. It's pretty a pretty fast video, and there's not really that much content. Um, that's because Docker files in general are pretty easy to create in theory. Um, I think just with the R community, there's not a lot of resources for us. Uh, so I think this video will hopefully help you kind of get a little starting guideline where you know if you have a Shiny app, you can kind of just look at this, install your packages, copy your app, and it'll be pretty much good to go for where you can put it wherever you want. Obviously, with like Plumber and stuff like that, it's gonna be a little bit different. But um, Rocker and Plumber uh, have a pretty good integration together and pretty good documentation. Uh, so it's pretty straightforward. That being said, uh, I'm, I am planning on making a few more videos that I've already kind of pre-planned. So I'm going to make a video uh, next week on, or I guess in two weeks technically, um, on dimensionality reduction and machine learning. Also, I would like to do a video on geospatial plotting. So plotting like, you know, coordinate, uh, coordinate data. So that'll be pretty interesting. Additionally, I, I am going to do a big data video 
for this season. I know I put it off for season one, but I'm definitely going to do a season two uh, big data video. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, with that being said, um, I'll see you guys next time and tidy on.